And welcome back gamers, this is SKS for Let's Play Alter Ego, the life simulation browser game. The last time we left off, we had finished infancy and we were going into childhood, I think is what it was called. Let's take a look at our stats. We're unattached, no occupation, familia 73, that's alright. We're super smart and super physical. Um, social is 87, vocational 59. My calmness is not very good. I have very good confidence. Expressiveness, uh, I'm not very gentle. Hmm. Interesting. Happiness, 53. Thoughtfulness, 65, 60. So we're kind of trustworthy, and somehow we still have $277. All right, so let's continue on. Let's do a familia. Your mother has just informed you that a new pile of clothes has arrived from Aunt Doris's house. Her daughter, Henrietta, has been giving you her disgusting, skeevy, putrid, gross, ugly, grungy, moth-eaten, flea-bitten, nerdy hand-me-downs for years. This batch contains a pink flowered pair of pants, the flowers are bright green and yellow, a blue and orange ruffled blouse, and a dress that looks like it was donated to the Salvation Army 300 years ago. Um, we can either be mad, sneaky, or neutral, absolutely refuse to wear the clothes, dispose of the clothes, or wear the clothes. We're going to be sneaky, and we're going to dispose of the clothes. How are you going to dispose of these clothes? Accidentally throw them in the garbage, accidentally donate them to charity, accidentally spill a flammable substance on them. Wait, where am I going to get a flammable substance? How am I going to donate them to charity? I guess I will just throw them in the trash. Oops, when mom confronts you with the question, what happened to all Henrietta's loves of clothes, you remain perfectly deadpan. They are never unearthed again. Yes, because they're not going to look in the trash. That, <laughs> okay. Alright. Mom is just taking a job that requires her to be away in the morning and early afternoon. She decides to enroll you in a nursery school program. When you get there, you're greeted by a lady with a very skinny legs and large, round glasses. It's Harry Carey's wife. Most of you have no idea who Harry Carey is. I don't know why I use that joke. There are children playing with buckets of sand, building blocks and toys. There's a small girl sitting in a corner with tears streaming from her face. She has a runny nose and red cheeks from crying. Um... Let's get excited, because we're going to seize the day. We're going to walk over these bitches. Um, give the lady with skinny legs a kick, cry, walk over, and try to make friends. We're going to try to make friends, because we're going to be the party girl. Your excitement is a positive sign. You're trying to adapt to a new environment. You realize that your mom will be coming back, so you attempt to make friends. In the sandbox, you see a little boy your age playing with a bucket and a red shovel. What would you like to say to him? Hi, can I play? Can I play? The little boy interprets this as a threat to his territory. He holds the toys close to his body. You can ignore him or ask him to play. We're going to ask him to play again. The boy shakes his head back and forth. He wants no part of you. Well, you, sir, are a dumbass. Your mother is in the bathtub taking a nice, relaxing bath. You are playing quietly in your room. All of a sudden, the doorbell rings. Mom doesn't seem to hear it. Um... All grown up, resentful, nonchalant. I'm in my room playing, so I'm nonchalant. And I am going to ignore the doorbell. Because I don't care. You are too cool to worry about such mundane matters. Po posably, Susie Fantastic awaits you in the toy box. Posable, Susie Fantastic awaits you in the toy box. Because that's the way I was in real life. I just didn't care. I knew it was the parents' place to get the door, and not me. Your mother has just reminded you that it's time to practice your piano lessons. Oh, Jesus Christ. Let's be mad and complain. Why do you have to take these stupid piano lessons? Your mother just echoes back. You had to take these stupid piano lessons because your father and I paid for a fortune for this piano and the lessons that went with it because of your begging, she continues. Now practice. You have a recital next week. You practice some skills and then get down to serious business. You have a recital next week, you know. How do you think you will do? Well, I'm going to do awesome, even though I'm complaining. You're a very confident person with a supportive family. You give a brilliant performance and everyone calls you a gifted child. Hooray! I am super gifted. Soon after you sit down for dinner, your mother announces that the vegetable of the day is Brussels sprouts. Oh my god. <sighs> We're going to panic a little. Eat them, run screaming, put your finger in your mouth, make a gagging sound, feed the sprouts to your dog. We're going to make a gagging sound. Your mother doesn't see you putting your finger in your mouth and gets worried that you're really choking. She smacks you in the back a few times and assumes that the sinew from the meat must have got stuck in your throat. She takes the meat away and says, just eat the Brussels sprouts, dear. Oh my god. Damn it. Parents always doing this shit to me. Kills me. Ah. 
I guess everything I'm trying to pull is coming back on me. Your mom has promised that she will fix your doll's torn arm. She's talking on the phone, so she's not really doing anything. Now seems like a good time to remind her. Do we patient and sweet? Well, I'm going to be a girl, so I'm going to be patient and sweet. And let's see, make the TV loud to attract her attention. Leave her alone. Tap her on the leg. We're going to tap her on the leg. You tap mom rapidly on the leg and say, Mom, Mom, Mommy, Mom, 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 Louis, Mom. <laughs> What? Hi. <laughs> Say mom. Next to her ear, but she doesn't seem to pay attention. Let's see. We're going to get dad. You try to enlist dad's help, but he recommends that you let mom have her conversation in peace. Whatever that means. Say something to her. Leave her alone. I'm tired of this. I've tried both parents. We're leaving. Mom isn't feeling too energetic right now, but when she finishes, she fixes your doll. Hooray! Bam! An exciting movie is on television. The whole family is in the living room watching it. You get up to get a drink of water and return to find Mommy sitting in your spot next to Daddy. <laughs> Defeated or devious? I'm going to be devious. Sit down quietly in the corner. Tell Mom the doorbell is ringing. Tell Dad the doorbell is ringing. We're going to tell Mom. We're going to get rid of her. She falls for it. She rushes to the door and you jump up with Dad again. When she realizes what you've done, she squeezes in with two of you. Everyone seems a bit happier now. <laughs> Success! Hooray! Now we have a physical one. You ra oh God! You arrive at the dentist office and discover that you have four rather large cavities that need to be filled. <sighs> We're going to be frightened a little bit and block out the sensations with your mind. Your status sheet suggests that you are emotionally you are not capable of performing such a feat. The pain sneaks into your consciousness and is not unbearable. This experience will toughen you for next time. That's good to know. Maybe now I'll wash, I'll brush, wash my teeth. I'll brush my teeth. One of your playmates is the son of your mother's friend. That is so confusing. His name is Vincent. One day, while you and Vincent are alone, you become very curious about one another. Vincent suggests that you play make-believe game of doctor. Oh my! Are we going to be shy or are we going to be bold? I'm going to be bold, gamers. Say, let's play house instead. Say, I'll be the doctor first. Say, you can be the doctor first. Oh my! Um. I'll be the doctor first, because I like taking charge. Vincent says, it's my game, and I want to be the doctor first. You can agree or quit. Fine. You can be the doctor. You could have been more assertive, you know. Vincent asks you to remove all your clothes and lie down on the operating table. You can take off your clothes, quit telling him, I'm going to take off my clothes. You take off your clothes, and Vincent gives you a thorough examination. You think you might be doing something wrong, but it's great fun. When it is your turn to be doctor, Vincent takes off his clothes, and you compare the similarities and differences in your respective anatomies. He has an extra button down there, but for some reason you don't think it would be wise to push it. <laughs> what the fuck? He has an extra button. Never before have I thought of it being a button. Wow. Wow. That's that's amazing. Soap opera star Rex Xavier de la Pundra, Dr. Ronaldo Bandini on Animal Hospital, will be appearing in a record store in town to sign autographs and look for a child actress to play a kidnapped victim in an upcoming episode. Every one of your friends think there will be that will be there, especially Christine Hobbs, who is taking six years of acting and ballet lessons. This is finally your chance to meet the hunk of all hunks, Rick Xavier de la Punda. If only Mom would drive you. Select a mood. Let's be... We're not going to be hysterical. We'll be interested. And ask Mom to take us. Your mother needs your help to do some work around the house. Okay, we have to go into begging mode. Your mother sees that you are really excited about going. She drives you there and pushes you through the crowd surrounding Ray. That's what all his leading ladies call him. He's beautiful, although he does look quite a bit shorter than you imagine. Scream, faint, do nothing. Um, we'll do nothing, because we're just there. He signs your autograph, kisses your hand, then motions to the next girl. Aww, I didn't get picked. While trying to think of what to do one day, you notice that you could use a nice haircut. Mommy's favorite pair of shiny scissors is laying on the table. You are sure you could do the job by yourself. Do we want to be conscientious or curious? Uh, we'll be conscientious. We know what scissors do. Change your mind, clip a little piece of your hair off, bring the scissors into your room, and start giving yourself a haircut. Um, let's clip a little piece off. What? Okay, we'll be curious, and then we'll clip a little piece off. This isn't as easy as it looks. You pull up a long strand of hair and listen to the sounds of scissors go shik, 
and then closing with a click. Suddenly your mother is aroused by the lack of commotion usually accompanying sessions of solitary play. What are you doing, young lady? Your career as a hairstylist has suddenly fruited an early blow. Aw. Aw. So sad. At school, all your friends are talking about a television program that you cannot stay up to watch. A friend asks if you saw it. Should we be embarrassed or unashamed? Who cares? I went to bed. Unashamed. Say, I didn't watch the show. Your confidence keeps them from making fun of you. Someone even offers to let you sleep over at their house next time it's on. Sometimes friends can be really great. It's right, bitches. You've been ordered to bed by your parents in the middle of your favorite television show. What? I'm going to be angry. Complain about having to go to bed. Beg for ten more minutes. Whine. We're going to beg for ten more minutes. It doesn't sound like begging when you're angry. Instead, it sounds like you're demanding more time. Your mother sends you off to bed with a stern lecture on how to speak with your parents. Aww. This is, this is not fair. There is one more ice pop in the freezer that is being saved for another family member. Uh, f your mouth waters the thought of the cool, tasty treat. Hmm. She wants something in her mouth. Interesting. Um... Hungry, able to resist. I guess we can be able to resist. And we'll leave it alone. This must have been very difficult for you, considering your history of untrustworthy behavior. What? Your appreciation for others increases your score in trustworthiness, social, and intellectual areas. Oh, I love that I'm not trustworthy. Your best friend challenges you to a dress-up competition. Uh, I'm very competitive. Turn down the offer and suggest a different game. Accept the challenge. We will accept the challenge. After several minutes of posing and make-believe dress-up, your friend points to your mom's closet and challenges you to real dressing up. Um, we'll accept the challenge. You find two designer evening dresses and pull them over your high heels. <laughs> you guessed it. You can put the dresses in the rear of the closet and hope for the best. Tell your mom about what happened. Well, we're not very trustworthy, so we need to build that up. So let's tell our mom. That was the responsible thing to you. Your family is proud of you. Hooray! She shouldn't have let us in there by ourselves anyway. It's time to sell candy bars for the school charity drive again. We're going to be motivated and enlist my father's help. He knows everybody. What a team! You move from door to door with confidence, selling four whole boxes in less than an hour. It's a powerful bonding experience that strengthens family ties. You go out for ice cream soda to celebrate your successful partnership. Hooray! Though this might be bad because if I'm really close with my father, you know, uh, I might not turn out to be bad. I won't be a stripper. <laughs> Your friends are waiting for you to come out after school. You have a ton of homework and have been watching television since you came home. On your way out, your mother asks, did you do all your homework? Um, let's be semi-honest and say I've got a little left. Semi-honest is, is almost like being semi-pregnant. Your mother says, finish what you have left before you go out. <sighs> You just turned off the television set. Your room is pitch dark. Though the shadows, you notice that your closet door is open just a crack. You can almost see the image of a black hooded axe murderer squinting at you through the door. He is waiting. Waiting for you to close your eyes and fall asleep. In the quiet of the night, you can hear his hoarse breath making deep, gurgling sounds. You look away from the door, then look back. It's opened a bit farther than it was the last time. If only you can make it to the closet and shut the door tight. You know he won't be able to get out and murder you in your sleep. The morning light will destroy him, so you won't have to worry about seeing him when you wake up. Select a mood. I'll be a little afraid, and we're going to sneak out of the bed. As you inch toward the closet, you imagine the murderer laughing at how stupid you are for falling right into his deadly trap. You'll show him. You'll lunge toward the closet door, tripping over the leg of the bed and pulling the bed linens down on top of you. Ha! You've done it. The closet is closed. You can finally settle down into a relaxing night's sleep. Now if only those aliens would stop hovering outside your window, waiting to suck you into their spacecraft so they can examine your brains. Alright, we have another physical challenge. While you're outside playing alone, a car pulls over to the side of the road, and the driver motions for you to come over. You notice the license plate reads OBO237. Um, I'm going to be super suspicious, and I'm going to stay where I'm at. He motions for you to come closer. He has a kind enough face. You hear him say that he's a policeman looking for a friend of yours. He asks if you will get in and help him find your friend. Um, we're going to walk and run away. You move away from the man, suspicious that he not let you tell the truth. This is smart. Intellectual spheres rise sharply. This man hurts children. Oh. 
That's always good. You and your family are at a holiday get-together. Uncle Sam is sitting in the corner of the room. What? <laughs> Why is Uncle Sam here? Drinking from a funny-looking glass. He's the one who always kisses you and squeezes you hard whenever you see him. Mom says to mind him because he's your father's brother, but you don't like him. He always smells like whiskey. Here he comes now, calling out your name and saying, You are his little darling. Um, we could be frightened of him and stand there and wait for him. You stand there, stiff and nervous, waiting for him to greet you and get it over with. He scoops his hands under your arms and lifts you close to his body. His face is rough and prickly. Let's keep still. Let's just let it go. He holds you from under your arms and pulls you close to him. His face is rough and prickly, and you could smell the drinks on his breath. It's awful. Finally, your mother comes over and asks you to do an errand for her. Thank goodness. You notice Mom saying something to him. He's laughing and saying, don't be silly. Mom has a stern look on her face. Later, when you see Mom, she seems mad at you, but you can't figure out why. That makes no sense. Why would she be mad at me? Mike Brady is always calling you names and stepping all over your nice shiny shoes. Today he's carrying a large bag of groceries from the store. Um, let's be mischievous because we like to get revenge. And we will seek revenge. You think of two ways that you can get back at stupid Mike. Run by and rip the bag so everything falls out. <laughs> Put your foot out and trip him as he walks by. I think running by and ripping the bag is hilarious. That reminds me of the binder wars that we had in middle school with me and my friends where we would just always knock each other's binders down the stairway and everything. You take a big lead and start running toward him. Just before you get to him, he moves away. You see him carefully remove an egg from the bag. Uh-oh. All oh, that asshole. The girl who sits next to you in school has just passed a note folded in a tight square. She motions to you to read it. You look around the room. Mr. Hennessy... He's named after alcohol. The meanest teacher in school has his back to the class. The note says, Did you notice that Mr. Hennessy's underpants are pulled up so high you can see him right through his shirt? Your realization of this is enough to give you an uncontrollable case of the giggles. Let's be curious and daring. Write a note on back asking, I wonder if Mrs. Daphne gave them to him. Crumple the paper up and throw it away. Now we're going to keep this going. You return a note and wait for another response. All of a sudden you hear Mr. Hennessy say to your friend, Miss Brady, would you care to share your little secret with the rest of the class? Melissa Brady steps out of her seat, stands up and begins to act like she was really scared. This is her forte. When she is making, when she is make believe, making believe she doesn't know what the teacher is talking about, on the verge of tears, she crumples up the note and slips it under her desk. Mr. Hennessy asks her to show him what she has in her hands. Both hands fan open, revealing two pink palms. She turns to you and lets another giggle loose. We outsmarted the teacher. See, my friends that are girls were awesome at this. You're in the candy store buying candy with a $5 bill given to you by your mother. Your bill comes to 50 cents. The man gives you back change, but no dollars. Um, I'm going to be confused and question the man. The man tells you that you gave him a $1 bill. Disagree. I know I had a five. My mom gave it to me. He says, come on now, girly. I told you. Now get out of here. Get help. This is what moms are for. What do you get help for? Get the policewoman on the corner. Get mom. Well, mom's right there. The man tells your mother the kid gave me one. An argument ensues and your mother threatens to call the Better Business Bureau. Eventually, your mother gives up. Two days later, she finds that she really did give you a dollar bill by mistake. Come to think of it, you never checked either. I guess parents can be wrong sometimes, too. What? Thanks, Mom. Oh, we got another physical challenge. You need eyeglasses. Great. The first day you wear them in school, everyone calls you four eyes. Your parents refuse to get you contact lenses. Um, I guess I'll be a little hurt. And wear the glasses and tolerate the names because I have to be able to see. It's painful to hear the name calling. Oh wow, that was the shortest one ever. Your mother is giving you permission to have a party. Alright. You want to invite most of the kids from your class. There's one child that you have second thoughts about inviting. Her name is Louise Feedback. All of the kids call her Louise Feedback because she is very fat. You mentioned to your group of friends that you are thinking about inviting Louise. They make faces and pig noises. Some of them say if you invite that bag, they will stay at home. Um, I'll have mixed feelings, but I'm going to invite her anyway because if you ever notice, there's always a Duff, the designated ugly fat friend. And if I'm going to be a whore, I have to have those. When you ask Elise to come to your party, she immediately assumes that you're joking and want to make fun of her. 
Uh, try to convince her, or use this as an excuse to call her a jerk. So we'll try to convince her. She's completely overjoyed. This is the first time she ever felt like part of the group. Some of your friends do stay at home that night and refuse to speak with you at school. Louise's mother calls you and thanks you for being so generous. Louise's mother also happens to be extremely rich. On your next school vacation, she flies you and Louise to Hawaii for a week to stay with the relatives there. Aloha. Sweet. So I'm already traveling abroad. Hawaii is abroad to little kids. Mrs. Mulberry, your teacher, has asked you to be her special assistant for the school bake sale. Already your friends are whispering that you're a teacher's pet behind your back. Who cares? Be flattered. Say, yes, ma'am. I would be happy to help you. Your friends snicker and call you a brown nose and a teacher's pet. They refuse to eat lunch with you. Your social standing drops considerably. Who cares? Billy Harper is the cutest guy in your class. Oh, yes. You've been giving each other the eye for about two weeks now. You're all set to talk to him when your best friend, who happens to have nicer clothes and prettier than you, confesses that she cannot sleep at night because of him. She asks your advice about the best way to meet him, unaware that you two are smitten by him. Um, I'm going to be jealous. Or be frank. Uh, no, I'm going to be jealous and admit that I like him too. Be bringing your feelings out into the open prevents you from acting on them in a destructive way. Agree that you both can try to meet him. Agree not to interfere with your friend's bid for attention. Uh, we're both going to try. This doesn't sit comfortably with either you or your friend. You both decide that your friendship is more important than a date with Billy. That's silly. Silly, silly, silly. You're in the house bored with absolutely nothing to do. Your mother keeps telling you to read a book. You look over at the telephone and wonder how many children in town, in this state, in this country, in this whole world are bored at this very second. Why not try to make a new friend? Inquisitive or apprehensive? Let's be inquisitive and dial the phone. The phone rings. Hello? Splecken dingen haben eben? What? This doesn't even sound like a very worthwhile telephone call. Do you want to try again? Yes. The phone rings. Myong he he hope ti minup no. This doesn't sound like a very worthwhile telephone call. Yes, we're going to try again. Young lady, what do you think you're doing? Oops, it's mom on the extension. Now you have something to do. Go to your room. Aw. <laughs> that was pretty funny. Who founded the American Federation of Labor? Oh, this is one of those, uh, those questions to make sure that you're playing the game, I guess. We'll put Samuel Gompers there. You are correct. Who is the first vice president of the United States? I know that one. That's John Adams. Who is the first ruler to consolidate the Slavic tribe? Uh, Rurik. Yes. Which of these scientists is credited with the discovery of oxygen? Uh, Priestley. Who wrote The Great Gatsby? F.S. Fitzgerald. Yes, correct. Hooray, SKS is smart. Emotional, oh lord. We're walking around the store with a friend. You notice that she sneaks a small item into her purse. That whore. You ask her what she's doing. She tells you how easy it is to shop with saying they never check girls. Um, we're going to be honest. Urge her to put it back. You refuse to steal and tell her that she better put back what she stole. You can turn her into the store manager, keep trying to convince her. Well, I don't want to just turn my friend in, so let's try to convince her. It's too late. She's already a hardened criminal. She sneaks a tube of lipstick into your purse. While you protest, the store manager comes over to see what the commotion about. He sees the lipstick tube sneaking out of your purse. He accuses you of shoplifting. He calls up your mother. Because you are trustworthy, your mom believes that you were framed. That whore. This is why girls can't be friends with each other. In the schoolyard, your friends are discussing something very secretive. You go over to see what's going on, and you hear one of them say something very strange. It has to do with the way you were made. Hmm. Let's be unaffected. And now that your parents would ever do that, ask your mother for the real story. Do nothing. We're going to ask mom for the real story. If you were truly unaffected, you wouldn't care enough to ask. You should examine your feelings more closely. Bullcrap! Warning, this episode could... Oh, oh, here we go. Do you wish to continue? Yes. You're in the house alone. While you're exploring the drawers, you notice a Playgirl magazine underneath a pile of clothing. Hmm. I'm a girl. This is... Oh, it would be. Okay, yeah. This would be my mom's. Not Playboy, Playgirl. So we're going to be interested, and we're going to examine the magazine. 
The middle page fills out to show a man in a cowboy hat and boots. Yeehaw. With nothing else on. When you, tr you try to turn the page, but you can't believe what's there. Your eyes are frozen into one spot in particular. We can be aroused, confused, uninterested. I think since he's a cowboy, we're going to be aroused. Your curiosity stimulates some early sexual fantasies. At this point in life, unless you're extremely precocious, you don't have all the facts about sex. You're finding out fast. Take the centerfold and keep it, or leave it alone. We're going to take it. The centerfold guy continues to intrigue you. Every once in a while, you have a sexy dream with him as the star. Oh my. Marcus Cripple and the Tube Heads are the most popular rock group with kids your age. Anyone who likes them is in. If you don't like them or their new hit song, I Love You Blowtorch Eyes, you're, defined, you're a definite geek. Are we concerned with peer acceptance? Unconcerned. We are concerned because we are a girl. Uh, spend your whole allowance on their new album. Do not buy their newest album. We're going to spend our allowance on it. You return home from the record store and listen to the hard driving sounds of lead singer Marcus Cripple. I love you, blowtorch eyes. When I kiss you and my heart fries, with your looks, with your looks, you paralyze, paralyze, put my love on your burner. I'm your biggest yearner, blowtorch eyes. That is so beautiful. Good God. You have just discovered that your best friend's boyfriend has pulled his life savings to buy her a pair of diamond earrings for her birthday. What a loser. That early? Later that evening, she tells you she is thinking of dumping him because she's not sure if they make a good couple. Uh, we could be concerned. Tell her about the earrings. Let her hand it out herself. Tell her boyfriend that she is planning to dump him. Um, well, as a girl, I want her to get the earrings. So I'm going to tell her about the earrings so that she'll get them. She tells you she really wasn't thinking of dumping him. It was just she didn't know whether or not he really loved her. Now she knows. She gets angry with you for spoiling her surprise. Whoop, bitch. You've just passed her childhood. Family life is progressing very well. Dad is still the greatest hero of all time, and Mom is pretty terrific, too. Physically, you are healthy. You could track the standard fare of childhood diseases, assorted sniffles, coughs, bumps, and stomach aches. Socially, this could be an awkward phase of life, especially when you hit the ripo age of 9 or 10. Should you like boys? Should you not like boys? Decisions, decisions. All in all, you're developing good social skills. You don't always close your mouth when you're chewing food, but hey, nobody's perfect. Now, regarding your emotional and personality development, you're a remarkable, trustworthy young lady. See, that's turned around. Your sense of ethics and fair play are quite remarkable for a child your age. The degree to which you display aggressive types of behavior is somewhat alarming, especially for a young lady. You can be nasty and spiteful at times. You are about to enter adolescence. It is a somewhat hectic time of life, full of surprises. There are many high highs and many low lows. With each year, you gain responsibilities. You may also notice that people will begin to start forgiving you less for things previously described as mere childhood habits. You will be expected to act like a lady and become helpful around the house. Sometimes you may become moody and teary without any reason at all. Oh yes, then there's the matter of boys. If you haven't noticed them much in this phase, I'm sure you will soon. They'll be noticing you quite a bit. And there we have it. Let's skip past this. Welcome to Adolescence. Bam. Ooh, we have some things that we'll have to look at next time. We have school, relationships, risk, and work. Excellent. So gamers, this is SKS, hoping you enjoyed childhood. I will see you all next time. Good night.